Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dive Deep. I'm Shelby Cornett, and I'm the ministry assistant at Cambridge City Christian Church, and I'm with Danny. It is I, me again. And how's Shelby today? I'm good. Good? How are you? Good. I heard you have a lot of profound, deep thoughts. All the time. On Okay, on today's <laughs> podcast. So you yeah. just said you have them all the time, so let's hear them. I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, I can't just say them. Why? The moment has to be right. <laughs> the, moment, the moment has to be. Well, this is the moment, <laughs> no, isn't it? <laughs> oh, so, so you don't save your best moments for your podcast? No. Oh. It's just when they, when just they come out, Lucian, they come right? out. Just for Lucian. Yeah. He hears all my profound thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Lucian on one of these podcasts and find out if this is true. If you if you really do have profound thoughts. Don't ah. ask him. Don't ask him. He's Wait mean. a minute, you missed it. I, I was trying to insult you and you just totally missed it. You I said because I was insinuating you didn't have uh, yeah, I get what you're but you saying. just kinda Okay. Of course I didn't I brushed mean that, it off. Because you know it's not true, right? Yeah, because I have profound thoughts all the time. Okay. You've got a lot of self confidence. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. I see yep. that. All right. Well, yep. your self confidence has stymied me yep. yet again. So I will let I will turn this podcast back over <laughs> to you now. So I won. You won. As usual. Doesn't the woman always win? That's what always happens, right? They should. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, That's won. how it should go. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> All Down right. to business. Down to business. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Mark series. Mark series. Continued. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And this week was seeing Jesus like never before. Yeah. This is a story of Jesus up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm-hmm. What'd you What'd you think of that image of Jesus up there? He that was crazy. Yeah, what was crazy? M- all of my notes were about the transfiguration. Okay, just like the event itself. The, ev- yeah. the event. So, yeah. what about it was crazy to you? Like, just like, okay. So obviously, it's just cra- like the visual is just mm-hmm. like hard to even yeah imagine. Yeah, it's but then Peter's reaction, mm-hmm. I think, is how a lot of people would react. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Peter's reaction was unnatural. Or right, anything. and it made me think of like. A super fan with like a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that was something I would have never even thought of. Like, oh my gosh, it's an honor to uh-huh. to meet you. And so it'd be like, no, I'm not even gonna say that because nobody comes even close to Jesus. So I'm not gonna say that. Um, no. But but <laughs> but that is funny. That's how he See, reacted. That's the difference from a young millennial. To, are you millennial? Or I'm are like, you? I'm like right there at like millennial Gen, Gen Z. Gen Z, all right. So that's mm-hmm. the difference between a Gen Z looking at this and an old um, Gen Xer looking at it, right? You like, just look at it like. Yeah, I guess I didn't see the celebrity side of. of that's how Peter's he. Re- that's how he acted. Was like yeah. a super fan. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Which we should all be Jesus super fans. Yes, but. we should. Yeah, I mean, it, it is definitely a, an interesting reaction that Peter has mm-hmm. in this. I mean, the passage is in Mark chapter 9, if you haven't mm-hmm. read it, verses 2 through 13. So Jesus takes three of his closest disciples, mm-hmm. Peter, James, and John, and they go up on this mountain. Today, there is a mountain in Israel that they think was the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm-hmm. There's a name given to it, but they're not 100% sure, certain mm-hmm. which mountain it was. And when we say mountain, like here in the United States, we think of like the Rocky Mountains that are like 13,000 feet high or something. Yeah. I mean, mountains in Israel, on the most part, are not that high. Right. Uh, there, is a, there is a mountain up in northern Israel, like right on the border with Syria. It's called Mount Hermon. That's, that's about like a Rocky Mountains mm-hmm. height type of mountain. Um, but most of the mountains in Israel, like your tallest ones would be more like the Appalachian Mountains here in the okay. U.S., you know, three, 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet. So see, I pictured it. So that that's different. kind of what makes it hard to know which mountain they were on mm-hmm. because they're all very similar in size right. and whatnot. But anyway, um, anyway, they go up there and then Jesus's appearance changes. The text even says that he it's funny when you read it because it says that it was whiter than any white has ever been seen. So mm-hmm. it, it couldn't like 
describe I picture it, it like hurting your eyes. Yeah, it would be like hurting your eyes. It would almost, yeah. you know, the image I've ever I, I have in this is like if you've ever gone to a concert mm -hmm. and they have the lights that move around and stuff, mm -hmm. and every now and then the light will like shine you right uh -huh. in the eyes, and it's like <laughs> like this do for you, a second. That's kind of the image I get. Do you want to know how I picture it? Okay, I might not want to, but go ahead. So first of all, I picture a mountain like a real steep. Okay. Like snowy mountain, like all they're right. going up. A Wasn't that? But okay, all it's right. just the picture okay, I right. had in my okay. mind. Well, I'm gonna fix your picture. And then well. I thought of like when he like transformed. This sounds so stupid, but I promise you, it's what I pictured. Like Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> when she changes her dress, and it's like the real sparkly dress. Like, I picture it, like, so sparkly that it hurts. Okay. I, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> That's <laughs> how I pictured it. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess everybody has their own way of picturing it. See, here, here's where the danger comes in with this illustration, okay? you do, I am a 44-year-old man. For me Sorry. to describe what's happening in a Frozen movie might come across <laughs> as a little strange, okay? Right. So I'm just going to leave that description to you, Shelby. It's just... All right. I'm just going to leave it. Maybe there. it's because I've seen Frozen so many times lately. Well, you have two young ones. Yeah. That mm -hmm. that's just what came to mind. The music's pretty good in it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. So that is your image. That yes. is your image. A Elsa Jesus shiny. with an Elsa All cape right. dress well, thing. I'm just hoping that that sin that you just committed, he'll <laughs> forgive you for saying that on this podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sins come in all varieties, Shelby, and you just sin by comparing Jesus to... To a prin people. Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I this, told you this it was going to sound This stupid. podcast has gone off the rails here today. All right. All right. So anyway, <laughs> but no, I appreciate your... Okay, I need to bring Pastor Danny back into this. Shelby, I appreciate your description and, mm -hmm. and what you took from that. Oh. Um, but... Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Okay, so yeah, it is, but it is interesting. And then, what is Peter's reaction? You kind of alluded to it already. Like he's Peter, a super fan. He's, he's a super fan. Like, <laughs> so we're going from Elsa to super fan. Like, oh my um, gosh, it's an honor to be here. Can I do anything for right. you? Right. Okay. So, I mean, I guess in a way, the disciples sort of were like Jesus groupies, right? Like, they, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but just in a different way, though. Because right. they weren't there just because of the... Positively. Yeah, just not... They weren't there just because of the fandom of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, although, you know, Shelby, you might not be as far off as you think. Because in some ways, see, you are You're profound. surprised. You're <laughs> profound, right? Because, I mean, if you look at certain in instances in, in Jesus' ministry with the disciples... Mm -hmm. Well, we went through one, uh, what well, was a couple weeks ago, when Jesus described what was going to happen to him. Remember, he said mm -hmm. that he was going to suffer and die, and then Peter's like... No, no, you're not. This isn't going to. I mean, that that kind of does give you this groupy feel, sort of like they were there to yeah. be his fans. Right? And like when Jesus had to cross the sea or whatever yeah, to yeah. get away from people because people were like swarming. Well, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some it's of that. It's like paparazzi and <laughs> super fans. Yeah, just they were. Oh, my gosh. I just had this stupid image pop up in my head. I don't know where this came from. It, if you've ever watched the, I'm thinking of like, you know, because this was 2,000 years ago before Polaroids, right? right? If you've ever watched the Flintstones, they had like the the cameras oh, with the yeah. stone, the bird that would chisel out yeah. the picture. That's what they did, right? No, I picture. I don't know where that came I from. I pictured was, legit cameras, see what you've red done carpet, to, limo. See what you've done to me today, Shelby. You've, got, you've made my mind go into places it shouldn't go. Disney Princess Flintstones. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we've touched on it. It all makes today. sense, though. But no, I mean, you know, with Peter, Peter and some of the disciples, there were times where it sounded like they were there more for Jesus mm -hmm. to be his fans than to actually follow. Yeah. Um, and you know, being a follower of Jesus means we follow him wherever he leads us, even if it means suffering mm -hmm. and whatnot. And and Peter didn't like. He didn't want to believe that. Yeah. yeah. So hmm. it could work. It could work. Mm -hmm. I could see some connections there. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, he tries to build these shelters, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the, the whole emphasis on, on the message really was about how he should have taken that moment 
and been silent mm -hmm. and just enjoyed being in the presence of Jesus with with both um, Elijah and Moses. Mm -hmm. And um, but he didn't. He was he had to felt like he had to do something, prove right. himself or something. And and uh, and how important it is. The message pretty much focused on how important it is for us to find those quiet places. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you think of the, the the opening illustration I used in the message was the the silent room that had been created oh, by Microsoft. Yeah. yeah, the quiet room where they had like padded it and done all this stuff. And people can't stay in it. Yeah, and people like nobody can stay in it longer than an hour or so because when you're in there, it is so quiet. You can like hear your heart and you can hear your um, the blood moving through That's your body. That's scary. They, the, the one thing I didn't mention, too, that they said in the article that I found, they said that you could even hear bones grinding, like when you move your oh, when you move your elbows ew. and knees and stuff. It was so quiet that you could even hear that. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously Jesus isn't saying we need to go find a quiet room like that, but, but, but we need to But we're uncomfortable with silence a but lot of the are. time. We yeah. are very uncomfortable with it. Both figuratively and and literally, literally, mm -hmm. as we just saw with that with the quiet room, but but even figuratively, mm -hmm. we just don't like being alone with our thoughts, mm -hmm. with our feelings. Um, and it's almost like when you're alone with your thoughts, you face reality, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's not. Yeah, because the noise can kind of drown it out. Yeah, you, know, you can avoid it to some degree. Like you can um, stay busy and yeah. keep your life, yeah, cr hectic. Mm -hmm. But Jesus teaches over and over again because it says he goes off to be alone mm -hmm. now in this situation he took his three disciples with him but but in many cases he went to be alone and, and the reason he did mm -hmm. that was to spend time with the father and for us it's to also go and spend time with, mm -hmm. with God but it's also an opportunity for us to kind of I don't know connect who we are with who God is and by looking at God we see ourselves with who we are and that we're sinners that we're in need of help um mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have a really messed up view of ourselves and, and we might we may not admit it, but like we might think that we're more powerful or more able than what we really are. Mm -hmm. So when you spend time with God, you're reminded even more of how little you are. Right. And we need that. We need mm -hmm. that in our lives. Um, so that was, you know, something Jesus, I think, teaches us that silence is really important. Um, one of the things I said that it's an opportunity we should never pass up. You mm -hmm. know, we but yet we do. We we try to find a way to. Uh, I mentioned as well that Jesus' schedule was: I'm going to find, or I'm going, there is, I'm going to spend time with the Father through silence, and then everything else is going to fit in. Right. But for us, it's the other way around. It's I'm yeah. going to do all this stuff, and then when I have time, I'm going to fit Jesus into it. Right. So we we have to somehow get back to that to that mm -hmm. other model. So anyway, the, the main point was to listen so that you can see, which mm -hmm. is kind of a w kind of a play on words, sort of with senses, but listen mm -hmm. so that it's you like can actually see. It's like when you lose one scent, another, mm -hmm. or not scent, sense. A scent, losing the scent, yeah. It's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> when you lose one sense, others are hiding. enhanced. Enhanced. Yeah. Like yep. when you turn down the car radio so you can see better. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, there you go. That's another another good one there, Shelby. So anyway, the uh, you know the the assignment this week was to try to take the passage we read this week mm -hmm. and read through it five times, mm -hmm. and just kind of see what God says to us through it, and that we might catch some things that we've never caught before as mm -hmm. we spend that time with Him. So hopefully, everybody's taken some time to do that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So. Is there anything else this week that you had? No. All of my notes were about the transfiguration. Yeah, that's what really stuck. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing story. I mean, I yeah. could I could definitely um, see why you would do that. You know, it's it's. I would say when I think of all the miracles and the things that Jesus did in his ministry, obviously the resurrection is the biggest. But when you take the resurrection out of the equation, probably I would say this one in calming the sea for me is the mm -hmm. two like most whoa yeah type of miracles that happen but i think that's one of the beauties of jesus ministry is that people can i bet you those watching this and i don't know maybe you you might even have different things that amaze you we all have different mm -hmm. 
things that amaze us in different ways. I like so. the one um, with the pigs and the yeah, the guy the, in the, 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 the cemetery demon man. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a pretty cool story too. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, there. Again, it, we're all different. And mm-hmm. That's the beauty of the Gospels is that we can see a different story and we can kind of connect with it maybe more than other stories. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this is definitely one of them, the, the Transfiguration. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, so what's next week? So, yeah, so I'm working on that message today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, now I've got to try to ch- – this happens to me every week because, like, I'm I'm always in between two sermons. I was just telling you this before mm-hmm. we started, like – I have to remember what we talked about last week, but then I have to remember what I'm talking about. What you're you working know, on now. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the thing that we're going to look at this week is how, how often do we as people, um, like, I'm trying to think of uh, the, the best way I would describe it in a, in a, in a simplified way. Um, gosh. See, we're, gonna, we're in Mark. We're, we're going to be in Mark, I know the passage, we're in Mark 9, 14 through 50. Um, it's when Jesus is actually asked to heal a man. It's, it's, it's about getting, I, I, I'm remembering now, it's about getting in the way. Mm-hmm. Like, the, 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 the sermon is titled, Don't Stand in the Way. And, and okay. oftentimes, when it comes to blessings that God gives us, we like to, s- to try to say, well, it's somebody else's fault, or it's this situation. Mm-hmm. When actually, 90 five percent of the time the thing that stands in the way between our blessings and us is us Mm -hmm. um and um so we're going to kind of jump into that and look at there's actually several stories in the passage but all of them kind of have the same idea of the importance of belief and really trusting that jesus is going to do what he says he can do yeah so um this this does kind of strike it it, when we it is sort of a a recurring theme Mm -hmm. that keeps popping up but that should tell us something. That should tell right. us that it's important. Um, and so that's what we're going to dive into next week. Cool. Yep. All right. So we will see you guys next week, and we'll continue the Mark series. Mm-hmm.